Welcome to our multi-threading in .NET video tutorial. In part 2, we'll cover coding required to create a basic multi-threaded application with cross-thread communication. I would like to mention for those that are interested that you can find a complete source code for our sample application on our blog. You can navigate there by clicking on the blog's URL on your screen. Before we look at the coding, I would like to show you our sample application in action and explain the general interaction between threads. Our sample application is called a color changer and is using a background thread to change the color of a button. To start the thread, I'm going to click on the OK button and the color of the background starts changing. However, because it's so rapid, I'm going to use the console button to communicate the child thread to slow down and now the changes become smooth and gradual. By clicking on that button again, I stop and destroy the background thread and now the work is finished. So let's look at the coding now. In our project we created one form that will be our project start object and will be run on the application main thread and for our child thread we created a class CLS threaded.vb that will be run on our child thread. As some of you may recall from part one, we can provide a cross-thread communication with delegates. So let's start by looking at their declaration. As you can see here, we have two delegates. One of them is defined as a sub and the second one is a function. For both of them, we have to specify number of arguments and the type of those arguments and in case of the function we also have to specify the return value for that function. And now I would like to show you the methods that will be used as those delegates. So let's switch to our main form code. If you look at our update delegate you will see that we have two separate functions. There are th update remote and th update local. They both have the same declaration elements and they match our declaration for the update delegate. Inside, however, they are completely different. Our Remote function's only job is to evaluate if the work requires a delegate for cross-threaded operations or it can be executed with a standard call. If the operation is initiated from another thread, then the function creates a pointer to a local function that follows the delegate specifications. The reason for this extra step is very simple. Our main forms function can be called from within the form itself, from an instance of the object of class CLS threaded running on a different thread, or from an object of class CLS threaded but created on the same thread. Without the safeguard of invoke required block, calls to that function would fail half of the time because of using invoke method when it is not required or because it's not using the invoke method when it is required. The invoke method is used by the execution engine to make our application thread safe and to avoid memory access violations. If you will join us in part 3 when we walk through the code execution, I show you an example when the remote update function is called from the main thread and the local update is performed without invoke method. Our local update function changes the button color and returns one of the signaling flags 
based on our user's input, if any. Our complete delegate section follows the same programming approach and if you downloaded the source code from our blog you can review the implementation details. Next we're going to look at our thread start procedure. We call it start color changer and it's a sub that will start the background thread. We start with creating a new object of CLS threaded class by calling the new method of that class. Let's switch to our threaded class and look at the new method declaration. The new constructor declaration specifies two arguments. One of the thread update delegate type and one of thread completed delegate type. Because both of them are pointers, if you look at the call to the new method, you will see that the arguments that we use are pointers or address of the point to our remote methods that follow the declarations specified for our delegates. Before we continue with our thread creation, I would like to go back to the new method for just one second. In here, we assign the remote function pointers to our local variables, also pointers, that had been declared as thread update or thread completed. To complete the instance creation, we initialize local variables that will be used during the thread execution. Now going back to the thread creation procedure, after creating an instance of our CLS threaded class, we need to create an, a new thread, place our object instance on that thread and specify a pointer to the starting point for the thread execution. In our case, it is public sub named worker, defined in our CLS threaded class. We are also going to define some local flags that are going to be used to monitor user interaction. To start the new thread execution, we call the start method to run our worker procedure that was passed to the threaded instance in the new constructor. This is the call and this is the address for that procedure. Okay, so we reached the end of the coding part of our application and we are ready to examine it at runtime. We'll cover this in the last portion of this tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you in part 3.